hello dear friends welcome back to our channel and in this video we are going to learn about Vicarlis another play known as the plane dealer which got staged in the year 1676 so before going into the video let me introduce my website if you are a first time listener you can uh, go to this description box and see the link to my website and uh, you can see what we have provided there in the website more uh, comprehensible and well arranged simplified study materials for your NTA UGC net GRF English language and literature paper 2 is available there you can have the entire 900 plus audio lectures and 300 plus downloadable PDF materials and previous and practice question papers there once you subscribe to the course if you wanted to know more related to the course materials that we are sharing the fee structures and the free bonuses you can use this whatsapp number or instagram id to reach out me for Follow me on Instagram as well as subscribe to my channel if you are a first time listener and also press the bell icon while you subscribe so that you get a notification. So we were learning about uh, Vicarly's plays one by one. We have learned the gentleman dancing master, the country wife. Now in this video we will see the plain dealer quickly. This is not going to be a long video. I am not going to have... I'm not going to give a detailed summary of uh, the plane dealer. You can ask if you want a detailed summary in the comment section. Um, let me know if you needed it. I'll do it again if you need a detailed summary. Okay. The plane dealer is a restoration comedy by William Wycherley, first performed on 11th December 1679. Leave the uh, date and all. If you remember the year of its performance, then that's enough. Uh, remember the writer of this play and also the age in which it got produced. The play is based on Molière's Lee Misanthrope and is l generally considered Vicarly's finest work along with The Country Wife. So we have already learned about The Country Wife and The Plain Dealer is also considered as one of the finest works by Vicarly and it is based on Molière's Lee Misanthrope. The play was highly praised by John Dryden. So it is praised by John Dryden who was also a contemporary playwright and he is the most representative writer of the We have already done a video about John Dryden. You can refer that in the i button in the playlist. And John Dennis, both of them praised it though it was equally condemned for its obscenity by many. So since it is a comedy of manners, we have many obscene scenes. Uh, in uh, this play but it got praised by John Dryden and John Dennis anyway. The title character Captain Manly. This is the title character Captain Manly. The title character is Captain Manly, a sailor who doubts the motives of everyone he meets except for his sweetheart Olivia and his friend uh, Vernish. Actually he got a problem. He is a sailor. That's not the problem but he doubts everything. He doubts the motives of people that he meets. Okay? He never believes anyone. He doubts their motives, what they are up to. But he never doubts his sweetheart Olivia and his friend Vernish. Okay? When Olivia jills him and marries Vernish, he attempts to gain revenge by sending a page boy who unknown to him is a girl in disguise as is in love with him to seduce Olivia. When the truth of the page's identity is discovered, Manly marries her instead. See, even though he never doubted Olivia, his sweetheart, Olivia jills, o Olivia avoids Manly and marries Manly's best friend, Vernish. So, his, uh, this actually prompted him to take revenge upon Olivia. So, he sends a page boy. He sends a page but he never un, un, he never known that. He, it was unknown to Manly that this page boy that he is sending to Olivia is actually a girl who is in disguise as a man, as a boy, as a page boy. And this girl in disguise as a page boy is in love with uh, Manly. And he sends... Manly, uh, Captain Manly sends the page boy to seduce, seduce Olivia. But when the truth about the page boy's identity is discovered, Manly marries uh, the page boy, the girl uh, instead. The French philosopher, historian, dramatist Voltaire adapted the plain dealer to make his own play titled as La Prude. 
the prude okay so voltaire french philosopher historian dramatist voltaire he adopted the plain dealer by vicarly uh, when he wrote his own play titled as la prude that means the prude in english now let's see the plot the story is simple there are only two plots we can see only two plots in here unlike uh, the country wife which has three plots there are only two plots in the plain dealer and all the principal characters are uh, characters occupy the same social level and have occasion to interact thus creating a sense of unity actually you cannot find a character from some other social strata but all the characters they are occupying the same social level and they have because of that they have occasions to interact and that it it is more uh, simple and uh, in that way it reduces the complexity and it uh, it pro also provides a sense of unity captain manly the title character is described uh, by the author as honest surly and good humored okay he is honest good humored and uh, surly he believes firmly in plain dealing and the shortage of others who share that beliefs has led him to misanthropy so he believes uh, in plain dealing very direct dealings and he uh, the shortage of others who share that belief had him to misanthropy so he saw others with shortages and who shares the same belief and that led him to misanthropy helping others after losing his ship in the dutch wars manly has returned to london to seek another vessel so he uh, his ship got uh, lost in dutch wars and he returned to london after that and he wanted to have another vessel another ship he soon discovers that his mistress olivia thought to be a plain dealer like him has married another man and appropriated the money manly had left uh, in her care so when manly manly already had a sweetheart known as olivia he never doubted olivia even though he doubted everyone that he meets but still he uh, left uh, an uh, a particular amount of money uh, for her care in order to uh, she be in a comfort zone while he is away but olivia he he thought that manly thought that olivia is also a plain dealer like him but she proved that she is not like that she married another man manly's own friend known as vermish and uh, he she also used appropriated and exploited the money that manly left in her care torn between contempt and affection manly sends his young aide aid, fidelia to arrange a meeting with olivia so after this marriage that olivia and vernish had uh, manly was in contempt and affection and he was uh, ready to take revenge upon olivia so he sends manly sends his young uh, aide fidelia to arrange a meeting with olivia instead olivia develops a passion for fidelia what happens instead of any jealousy happening or any other um, problem happening between fidelia and olivia what happens olivia develops a kind of passion for fidelia who in fact is a wealthy young heiress disguised as a boy to be near manly so this fidelia she was disguised as a page boy and she is with manly because fidelia was in love with manly and manly was unaware about fidelia and uh, unaware about the true identity of the page boy so in order to seduce olivia page boy was sent by manly to he, manly to her and olivia develops a passion for fidelia and fidelia she was a wealthy young heiress and both olivia and manly they were unaware about the true identity of fidelia as a wealthy woman so and fidelia was in love with manly manly next discovers that olivia's secret husband is vernish the only man he really trusted so later he came to know that Olivia's husband secret husband is Vernish and Vernish was the only man that Manly trusted completely never doubted any intentions at Olivia's home Manly fights Vernish takes back the money 
and discovers that Fidelia who lost her wig in the commotion is really a young woman. So after knowing that Olivia's secret husband is Bernish, his best friend, Manly goes there and he engages engages in a commotion with Bernish and he takes back the money that he left, left in Olivia's care. And while that commotion was happening, Fidelia's wig got uh, misplaced and what happens everybody discovers Fidelia's true identity as a young woman. He immediately decides that Fidelia is a more proper object for his affection and together the couple plan their future in the West Indies. So Fidelia revealed uh, her affection for uh, Manly and he immediately decided that Fidelia went too far to gain Manly. So uh, Fidelia is the more proper object for his affection more worthy object for his obje uh, affection and together after that they uh, planned their future in west indies in the second plot what happens lieutenant freeman a young friend of manly attempts to marry the uh, canker cankerous old widow black care blacker for her fortune so in the second plot, the play has two plots. In the main plot, Olivia and Manly's uh, things are happening. In the second plot, we can see Lieutenant Freeman is trying to marry a wealthy widow, uh, black care, wealthy old widow, black care, for having her fortune. The widow whose only delight is in controlling her own business and suing people wants no part in such an arrangement. But the widow in turn showed no interest in Lieutenant Freeman because she is only interested in controlling her own business. She is, my, she is fully occupied with her own business and suing people. So she never wanted to have a part of, uh, wanted to be a part of such an arrangement. When Freeman persuades the widow's stupid son to accept him as his guardian with full power over his inheritance, widow Blacker uh, retaliates by claiming that her son is a bastard and not a legal heir. So she was so uh, so serious about her own business and wealth she knows how to protect it and when Freeman persuaded the widow's son the widow's son in order to accept Freeman as a guardian uh, with full power over uh, the son's inheritance Bl widow Blacker she knows that it is uh, done by Freeman in order to have a power over uh, his properties so blacker retaliate goes against uh, this uh, decision by freeman and she claims that the her son is a bastard and not a legal heir freeman however discovers this to be a lie and in order to avoid a charge of perjury the widow is forced to grant him a handsome annuity so what happens the freeman later discovers that whatever she told in order to keep the uh, properties with he, with her about the uh, about her son being a bastard and all that was a lie she he freeman later discovers that and in order to avoid any kind of perjury the widow decided the widow forced to grant him a handsome uh, kind of uh, good amount of annuity okay now so that's what happens in the second plot Michael's final play then cannot be judged judged his best so that's all about the plot of the play now let's see some other things related to the play Michael's final play so the plain dealer is his final play this is cannot be judged as the finest and the best play by him it may be it may well be however his darkest comment on society we can see a dark comment by Wykerly about society in this play manly is certainly the closest thing to direct a spoke, uh, spokesperson that Wykerly ever created and in plain dealer that spoke person was finally allowed to comment openly on the world of knaves and fools and hypocrites and whores and that had been presented with increasing pessimism in the three earlier plays so we can see that 
a kind of vocalist mouthpiece in this play manly is playing that mouthpiece in play dealer manly is a plain dealer he will say whatever comes directly to the people he will never hide his true identity his true opinions and he never uh, never lies and he is honest thoroughly and he uh, shows no pretense and all so you know he allow, was allowed in plain dealer mainly was allowed to comment openly about the world of knaves and fools and hypocrites and whores so he makes a comment open comments in here the problems with the manly may well be uh, the inevitable culmination of vicarious vision society corrupts honor and innocence and infects with uh, confusion even the best efforts of the best people so manly turned against olivia because olivia was not a plain, plain dealer or he, olivia never talked to him uh, plainly or never was so open about her feelings towards manly she was not a sincere person she was courting manly's own best friend vernis and married secretly and kept him as a secret husband away from nanly and even appropriated the money that uh, manly gave her to take care of okay so she was not a good character so manly turned against her he was honest and he was surly but still he turned against olivia because the society the people around him made him to be like that okay there is no fame ground on which the plain dealer can stand if you are a plain dealer you cannot have a fame ground the ground is always uh, always shaking because no other person around you is also a plain dealer you cannot take anybody as a plain dealer so there is no fame ground on which a plain dealer can stand just like he manly is a plain dealer he cannot believe his own best friend his own uh, sweetheart or anybody else so that's all about the plain dealer i hope this was the two plots in the play are uh, clear to you if you have any doubts or if you want more elaborate video you can comment that below uh, for the plain dealer i think this much is enough and follow me on instagram use the whatsapp number to reach out to me and also don't forget to visit my website for more contents related to nta ugc net jr of english language and literature in the form of audio lectures pdf materials and previous and practice question papers okay that's all about it meet you in the next video session until then stay tuned to high point and be happy strive for your best guys thank you tata -ta.